in the traditional sense, the way we've known about it so far, is we would create four IP route statements, one for each network, and we'd point that route to the next hop of 10.65.16.2, which is router 2's interface here. So we're going to send the routes from router 1 to router 2, and we're going to use four different routes to do it. Well, this is terribly inefficient, actually. And what we can do is we can actually summarize these four routes together to be much, much more efficient about how we create the static route. What we can do is we can actually create one static route to accommodate these four networks. So to start this process, this is, this is a little bit more binary math, but it's actually quite easy. If you understand the IP addressing and subnetting, this will be a piece of cake. So what we do is we convert our addresses to binary. So here's our, my four network addresses converted to binary on the bottom. Let's take a look at the ranges of each four of those networks. So in here, once again, I have my network portion in blue. My host portion of my address is in orange. I want to find the range of each of these four networks. So my first network here, 10.65.0.0, .0 .0, that ends the ad last address in there, my broadcast address, is 10.65.0.255. If I add 1 to that, I get my next available network, which just happens to be 10.65.1.0. So I add 1 to my broadcast address, tells me my next available network. My next available network happens to be the next network that I'm using, which is 10.65.1.0. So if I find out the broadcast address of that, is 10.65.1.255. Great. Add one to that, I get my next available network, which happens to be 10.65.2.0. My broadcast address for that, 10.65.2.255. And then last, my last network, 10.65.3.0 through 10.65.3.255, making the range of IP addresses that these four networks cover, ranging from 10.65.0.0 through 10.65.3.255. So if I can write these addresses in a different way to set it up so that I have a network address and subnet mask that covers the same range of addresses, I can create a much simpler static route. Here's how we do that. I once again take my four network addresses written in binary. And I then find the summary boundary. And the way I do that is I find matching bits in the network portion. So what I want to do is I want to start with the leftmost portion of my IP address here. And I want to work my way to the right. I want to examine the bits in each address and find out where they match. And then I'm going to draw a line between the bits of all four IP addresses that are exactly the same and the bits of all four IP addresses that begin to change. So let's take a look at how we do that. So bit one here, we have zero in all four network addresses. Bit two, there's a zero in all four addresses. Bit three, once again, zero in all four addresses. So is bit four, bit five, bit six, bit seven, bit eight. All eight bits, the first eight bits of all four addresses, are all 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Excellent. We keep moving then. Go to bit 9. All zeros. Bit 10. All ones. Bit 11. Zeros. 12. Zeros. 13. Zeros. 14. Zeros. 15 is all zeros and all four IPs. Bit 16 is still 1, 1, 1, 1 and all four IP addresses. So we're still the same. We go to bit 17. All zeros. 18. 19. 20, 21, and 22 are all zeros. So the first six bits of that third octet are all zeros here. It's not until we get to bit 23 here. Bit 23, now we have, in the last two addresses, we have 1, 1. And in our first two addresses, we have 0, 0. So in bit 23, all four bits are not the same. So what we do then is we draw a line then, because this is where... The bits are no longer the same in all four addresses. Everything to the left of the line that I've drawn, the bits are identical in all four addresses. And everything to the right of the line, 
the bits are no longer identical. Now, my host portion bits here are all zeros here. They're identical. Can I move my line over? The answer is no, because I need to write a subnet mask. And remember, my subnet mask is a series of ones followed by a series of zeros. Network portion followed by host portion. So what I'm doing, basically, is I'm kind of doing this reverse subnetting here. And instead of finding out how to break up a large network address into smaller ones, I'm finding out how to take four smaller ones and combine them into a larger one. So what this means is that my new subnet mask is going to be a slash 22, right? I have 22 bits here in my network portion. And I have 10 bits in my host portion. If I find out then what my network address is, I take my network bits from above, the first 22 bits, 10.65. And then the first six are zeros here. And then I find out my broadcast address, put all ones in my host portion. So all zeros in my host portion for my network, all ones in my host portion for my broadcast, first address, last address, 10.65.0.0 slash 22 which has a range of 10.65.0.0 through 10.65.3.255. This is the exact same range that we needed to cover with our four individual static routes. So instead of writing these four static routes up on top here, we can, as an alternative to entering these four routes, we cannot enter those and enter this one single route to reach all four networks.